Thank you, Alexa. Our gospel lesson is a very short passage that comes from a longer, much beloved passage from the 11th chapter of John's gospel. This is the time when Jesus goes to call his friend Lazarus from his tomb. To give you just a little bit of the context of the whole story in case you've forgotten, word is sent by Mary and Martha, good friends of our Lord Jesus Christ. He spent much time in their home. They send word that their brother Lazarus is ill and they need him to come right away because Jesus has the ability to heal. Everyone has known it and seen it and they believe that. And so they call for him. But Jesus doesn't immediately go and his disciples are a little bit concerned by that. And he tells them that Lazarus is going to fall asleep. And they said, well, then he'll get better on his own. And Jesus said, no, he was talking about his death. And he waits. And Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days when he arrives there. Mary and Martha both greet him separately, saying the same thing to him. Lord, if you'd been here, our brother wouldn't have died. And then Jesus goes to the tomb and he weeps with the others who are there over the futility of death and sin. But then he calls him from his tomb. This is after Mary has said she believes that he is the Christ, the resurrection, and the life. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection, and I am the life. Now, there's a little passage in here when they're talking about going to see the place where Lazarus is laid. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've often told people that my husband Richard and I had what we called a mixed marriage. He was a Baptist, I'm a Methodist. Baptists, if you don't know this, do not ordain women or baptize babies, or we have a lot of differences with the Southern Baptist tradition from which my husband came. But we were also mixed marriage in the fact that he was a math major and a computer science major, and I was an English major. So we didn't think alike, and he was often telling me of flow charts, and he was very orderly and organized, which I was not, in my thinking at least. And he would say, you just have to think of life as an if this, then that sort of sentence, if this, then that. Well, that's how we started the service this morning, with an if this, then that kind of statement from the Psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? If the Lord is my light and my salvation, if that's the if this, then that, the that would be, whom shall I fear? If the Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? If the Lord is the stronghold of my life, I have nothing to fear. This is a passage that I have known since I was 11 years old. My family then was worshiping at Frames Memorial Church in, in Phoenix, Maryland. And for one year only, we had a pastor who had come out of retirement from the West Virginia Annual Conference. His name was G. Mason Kreitz. He was ancient of days. I was 11 years old, and I still remember sermons he preached more than any other pastor, I think, in the history of me going to church. I learned so much from him. I learned of his great faith. I learned about the West Virginia Annual Conference from him. Now, when I served in West Virginia, I served as a member of Baltimore, Washington, because the Eastern Panhandle is part of our conference and always has been. But he served at a time when the West Virginia Conference was so rural and so mountainous that he served 28 churches on one charge, one pastoral charge. And I remember him telling me one day that he went to see someone at his home, and because he had a car and a suit and a tie on, they thought he was a revenuer, and they tried to shoot at him because he thought they were coming after his still. But every single time, Reverend Kreitz stood up to preach. Before he started to preach, he said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Every single time he preached for that year that he was my pastor, I heard those words. Didn't know then that pastors sometimes need to pray something like that or remind themselves of that before they preach because sometimes preaching can get you in a little bit of a hot water mess. But it's a 
passage that's come back to me so many times, at times of trouble, at times of darkness, at times of fear in my life, all I need to do is say these words and remind myself who God is for me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I've chosen during these weeks between Epiphany and Lent to focus on passages dealing with light and darkness because we're living in what seems like a very dark time. And I know that just yesterday, my mother got a call and other people got a call from BG&E warning them that the power may go out if we have the sort of storm that is being forecasted. And I know that that gives you a little bit of time to get your flashlights ready because it's very disconcerting to be in the dark, isn't it? Even a very familiar place like your own home can feel very strange. And the question arises with little children, should they be allowed a nightlight? Absolutely they should be allowed a nightlight because in the dark, the things that are unknown are so terrifying to children. And children as young as two have been found to have nightmares that they can even talk about and night terrors. And to wake up in a dark place without any light is frightening. I think I've told you this story before, but it's one that always strikes me as so profound. There is a storm at night. The lights have gone out. The only light in the house is little flashes of lightning and the, followed by the booms of the thunder. And the little boy is calling to his dad, Daddy, Daddy, come, come be with me, come be with me. Can I come get in bed with you? And the father says to him, you don't have anything to fear because Jesus is with you. And another boom and a crash. And the little boy would say, Daddy, Daddy, please come here. Please come be with me. And the father would say, Jesus is with you. You don't have to be afraid. The third time it happened, the little boy cried out, Dad, I really, really need you. Please come be with me. And his father said, Jesus is with you. And his son called back, yes, I know Jesus is always with me. But right now I need someone with skin. Jesus is the light of God with skin. He's come into the world so that we might know light in human form, so that we might be able to touch him and hear his voice and see in his actions, his compassion and his grace, who God is for us. Jesus Christ is my nightlight. Let me tell you that right now. Jesus Christ is my nightlight. The Lord is my nightlight and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Those are the words of comfort that we read throughout scripture this morning. Just little brief passages that talk about light. There are close to 400 light and dark images in scripture. And we read today of those Hebrew slaves setting out from Egypt. Finally, the Pharaoh has relented and let them go. And they go, and ahead of them at night goes the pillar of fire. God invents the flashlight to light in the darkness, to lead them, to protect them, to let them know that God is always with them, that God who called them from slavery into freedom will lead them through the wilderness to the promised land. And then we read the opposite end of scripture, the revelation of John of Patmos, who is given a vision. And this is from the 21st chapter. This is what I often read at funerals. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, the new heaven coming down, from heaven so that God will be with us with the promise to wipe every tear from our eyes. And there is no more temple because God will be with us. God is the temple. The Holy of Holies will be right in our midst. We can reach out and touch God's light. And there's not going to be day or night anymore. We're not going to have any need for night lights or flashlights or torches or incandescent bulbs because the light of God will be with us always. And then there's Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the place where Lazarus is buried in his grave. And he calls him to new life. The story that always moves me. But before he goes, Jesus says, we're going to go there. And they said, Jesus, they just tried to stone you. Don't you know what's going to happen to you if we go this close to Jerusalem? As those who walk in the light will not stumble, only those in the dark. And even his own death, his own crucifixion, could not put out the light. I encourage you to take some time to memorize these little verses from the psalm. It's a psalm of restoration, a psalm of hope. So that 
if you hear them enough, if you repeat them enough, they'll become part of your faith tradition as well. So that when you face the darkness, whether it's COVID and people are struggling right now, depression is on the rise, suicide is on the rise, and they're expecting that post-traumatic stress disorders are going to be the word of the day when this is finally behind us. I know when I talk to some of you that you just struggle against all this darkness and all this fear, and now a snowstorm that's going to isolate us further. These are the times to remember that Jesus Christ is with us. He came with us in skin that we might touch him and see him and learn from him. And now he is with us in our spirits, in our hearts, in the light of God that shines in and through us when we reflect his light to a dark and hurting world. The Lord is my light and my salvation. If that is true, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now I know that even very good people do get sick. Very good people get COVID. Very good people get cancer. Very good people are killed in traffic accidents. Very good people are murdered in the streets. I wish that faith could protect us from all those realities, and it doesn't. But it does take our souls to heaven. We will be there when Christ returns. We will see him as he is, and his light will fill the world again. But until then, he is with us. He is with us. We just need to see the light and be the light for others. So, if you need a night light, don't be ashamed. If you need a light so you don't stumble and fall, I recently put one in my house because the lights aren't working in my bedroom, but I have a little night light that I can plug into the wall. It's a great light because it only comes on when it's dark. And every time I look at it, I think to myself, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my light. Of whom shall I be afraid? May those words comfort and keep you in these dark days until we are through this pandemic, until our nation begins to heal, until the world begins to see the true light that has come into the world in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.